Hey guys, welcome to The Difference Church. My name is Pastor Greg and uh, I'm the founder of this church called The Difference. It's a little different than what has been done out there, but our goal is to teach people how to allow Jesus to be the difference in their lives by following him and then listening to his call, which is to go and love your neighbor as yourself, which is to disciple others. It's to walk with them in the way of Jesus. Well, how do we know how to do that? We got to learn how to follow Jesus. In this series, I want to teach you a little bit of the things that God has taught me. See, I read this verse many years ago and I thought the verse was very challenging because I didn't really know how to do it. It's John chapter 15, verse five. It's about abiding. You've heard me talk about this before. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't think this takes a lot of theological dissertation and discussion. It's pretty straightforward. Jesus uses this analogy of a vine and branches because the vine supplies everything that the branches need. The branches literally cannot survive. They cannot produce any fruit at all if they are not attached to the vine receiving everything that they need. Well, abiding in life is very difficult personal story, challenge. I'll tell you about my own life. I am a, a person who has been raised to work hard, to go after things, to go make things happen. And I did that early on in my life. I was pursuing so many things of the world, n not, not out of just complete selfishness. I wanted to be able to provide for my family, but I wasn't abiding in Jesus. I was like, yep, okay, thanks Jesus. Yep, I'm saved, now I'm gonna go do. And I just went out and started making things happen. And the problem with that is I found myself over time really feeling sort of uh, lost. I, I started having these feelings of anxiousness, like I didn't understand why I wasn't feeling this abundant life. Why didn't I have this peace that Jesus offers? I, I had salvation. I had said, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. But the truth is, I wasn't really abiding in him. And the truth is, I didn't even really know how to do it. The real pandemic of today is that right there. A friend of mine went to the doctor, he shared this with me on the phone the other day, he went to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, what uh, what meds are you on so I can get that written down? And he goes, I'm not on any medications. And he's like, what? He was like surprised by it. And my friend said, why are a lot of people on medication? He goes, everybody's on medication. And he said, the number one medication right now is anxiety medication. I'm telling you, you don't need anxiety medication. I've actually tried it. A few years ago, I said, man, I need something just to kind of get me through certain things. And I tried it and I started realizing like, what am I doing? I'm just masking something that's not working inside of me. Well, as God was transitioning me out of my last position into this new movement, he's like, Greg, I want to teach you how to truly abide in me. So this series is going to teach you four things. I call them the four S's and it is something that God taught me. It's spiritual disciplines. It's all over the Bible and it's something that Jesus himself did. The four S's are solitude, silence, scripture, and Sabbath. Today we're going to talk about solitude. Before I get there though, I got to kind of talk a little bit about where we've been in life and how did we find ourselves in this place? How did we find ourselves in this place where time has, has become so focused? Well, it's because we are in a war and we have an enemy. The enemy is the devil. If you don't just admit that and realize that you're in a war, you won't be able to fight the battle. See, Jesus is God and Jesus created us. Well, Jesus also created the devil, but the devil rebelled against God and tried to take over. He wanted to be God and so God cast him out of heaven onto the earth. Well, what happened to us? God created us, the story of Adam and Eve. We also rebelled against God, we rejected God. And so we were banished from the Garden of Eden as well and we were sent here to this earth. So now we live in a place where we have a choice. We can either follow the prince of the air, which is Satan who has been given limited authority in this world, or we can follow the creator, the one who made us, the one who created us for a relationship with him. The problem is so many of us get stuck in a pattern and we get caught in the tricks and the lies of the enemy. And I believe the number one uh, trick that the enemy uses, and this is a tactic in warfare, is distraction, 
or busyness, right? Busyness is distraction because you're distracted with all these other things, so you're just busy in life. You just keep going through these things. You don't really even know why you're doing the things you are. You're just pursuing because this is what the world tells me to do. I'm telling you that we got to learn a better way. We got to learn spiritual disciplines that will help us to abide in Jesus. That's what I'm going to teach you about. So think about our world. The, the, the reason why we find ourselves in this place is the first uh, device that started uh, measuring time is the sundial. It was the Roman sundial. And I want to read you a quote from a playwright back there. His name was Platous. And I want to read this because it, I think it speaks to us today. It says, the, this is what he wrote, the gods confound the man who first found out how to distinguish hours. Confound him too, who in this pace set up a sundial to cut and hack my days so wretchedly into small portions. Doesn't that make sense? Like, don't you feel that in your own life where everything is just chopped up? You don't have this natural rhythm to life. Um, in fact, religious people have also kind of exacerbated this. The monks themselves, this is interesting. Again, well-intentioned people do well-intentioned things that God never said to do. Well, the monks wanted to be uh, more prayerful. They want to have, they want to, to, to encourage uh, this sect, this group of people to commit themselves to prayer. And so what did they do? Well, they chopped it up and they said, seven times a day, we're going to pray. Does that sound a lot about like us, making it about us, making it about time, instead of abiding? Does that sound like abiding or is that like, oh, hey, the clock says this. You want to know what the result of that was? The mechanical clock was actually invented to help the monks stay on their schedule of seven times of prayer per day. The amazing thing about that is that most of us now actually wake up to an alarm clock or to our phone going off. And no matter how many cool sounds or music you try to do, no one really likes to wake up to a blaring sound. It used to be and, and that my dad grew up on a farm, and so it wasn't even that long ago. It used to be in agrarian society when we had to work the land that people would get up with the sunrise and they would go to bed with the moonrise. They had this kind of natural flow and in the summertime, it would be kind of a little bit of a busier season because the days were longer so they could get more done. And so they, but they would just pay attention to the, to the position of the sun. They'd stop and eat when the sun got to a certain position, right? There's this natural rhythm. In the winter time, it'd be a little bit slower because the days were a little shorter and so they didn't work as hard. And so they just kind of found this natural rhythm through the seasons. That's why seasons are still important in life to rest during certain seasons of our life. There'll be times of busyness and there'll be times of rest, but you got to find that natural rhythm. The interesting thing uh, is that the first public clock tower was first erected in Germany in 1370. So we started measuring time more and more and more. But what's happened? Has this really improved life? Most of us have been relegated to this nine to five lifestyle or really now it's become eight to six or even longer. People are working more hours. It's interesting because in a congressional hearing back in the 60s, some futurists were telling the participants there like, hey, this is gonna be great. We are gonna accelerate technology so much that the average American will only have to work about 22 to 24 hours. Do you wanna know that that's not what's happened? People are actually working more if you think about the amount of sleep that people get. Back before the light bulb was invented, people were getting an average of about 11 hours of sleep. I know some of you are looking at me right now and going, 11 hours, I would love to have that. I would kill for something like that. Listen, that's what people were averaging. A hundred years ago, you wanna know what it was? Nine and a half hours. Do you wanna know what it was a few years ago and it's probably even less now? People are only averaging about seven hours of sleep. That's four hours of sleep less than when the light bulb was evolved. See, the light bulb just extended our time. We can get more done. We can stay in the office later. We can have lights. I think it really hasn't been something that has done us well for our relationship with God, for our abiding in the Lord. So one of the things that I want to talk about today, oh, and by the way, it's the reason why we have Monster Energy and Red Bull and every other commercial of some energy drink to get you hyped up, five hour energy. You don't need all that stuff. I, have, I don't take any of that stuff because I don't need it. I got the Holy Spirit that guides me and leads me and gives me plenty of passion and energy to carry out the work that he tells me to do, not that I'm trying to strive and do on my own. I don't do anything on my own because apart from God, I can do what? Nothing. So solitude, what is solitude? Solitude is this. 
It's pushing away from my office. It's pushing away from the busyness. It's getting away from the appointments. It's letting my phone go for a while and finding a place where I can separate myself from the world. This is what Jesus himself did. It's all over the Bible. In fact, you can go all the way back to Genesis and learn about this. See, Abraham in Genesis chapter 24 was uh, looking for a wife for his son Isaac. He was getting, Abraham was getting older on in his years, and so he called his senior servant out, and he prayed over him, and he said, go pay attention to the Lord, and he will show you uh, a, a young woman who will be perfect for my son Isaac. And so the senior servant does that. He finds Rebecca, and he comes back into the camp where Isaac's at, and this is what it says in uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 63. Isaac went out to the field one evening to meditate. And as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. We've kind of forgotten the spiritual discipline of like separating ourselves and meditating, listening, receiving, hearing the word of God, both in the scriptures, but also listening to him in the, in the everyday now. Listen to Psalm 119, 50, 15. I meditate on your precepts, your ways, your things, and I consider your ways. See, we can consider the world's ways and our ways, or we can consider God's ways. What's better? God's ways are always much better. See, solitude is the way that Jesus lived his life. He was busy. He had a lot of assignments, did he not, from the Father? Well, how did he know what those assignments were supposed to be? And then how did he, how did he refill himself? How did he refuel himself? Solitude, check it out. I'm going to read a couple of things here. Mark chapter 1, verse 12. When Jesus first begins his ministry after he gets baptized, it says this in Mark 1, 12. At once the Spirit sent Jesus out into the, de- out into the desert, and he was in the desert for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. Jesus was separated from the world for a period of 40 days. God was preparing him, refining him, teaching him how to do battle. Jesus used the very word of God against the enemy to prepare himself for this ministry so that he could ultimately be the one to pay the price for us and defeat enemy, defeat the enemy and Satan and all of his principalities once and for all. That's exactly what he did. Here's another one in chapter Uh, In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, turned off his alarm clock. No, just kidding. He left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. See, in that verse, Jesus went off to the solitary place. And then when he came back, he told the disciples, hey, we're going to go to this town. Well, how did he know to do that? Because the father told him because he pushed away from the busyness and he went and sat and listened to God. Here's another one in Luke chapter 5, verse 15 through 16. Because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, Jesus said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. We're going to talk about Sabbath in another week. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Solitude. Jesus did it. Uh, Here's another one. Because uh, this is... uh, Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him. There are example and example and example of Jesus going away, finding a place of solitude. So what about you? Do you have a place of solitude? I've been making a list of all kinds of places of solitude that I can go, go to. Yes, I have a place in my house that I can go to, but sometimes... Even my house can become a distraction, and I like to get out in nature because I believe that I can experience God so many times in just the sounds of the water, the sounds of the birds, the sky, the clouds, the breeze against me. See, God created all these things, and so I I feel like when I'm out here, I can rest, I can receive. It's It's a place of solitude. Jesus did the same thing. He went into the wilderness many times, went onto a mountain. He went, sat down by the lake. I've got lots of scripture verses. You can research it yourself. Go look at what Jesus did. If we're supposed to be followers of Jesus, then guess what? We got to get some things right in our own personal spiritual disciplines before we go out and make a difference for anybody else, before we go disciple anyone else. How are we even supposed to know who we're supposed to disciple? Listen, if you don't listen to God, then you'll just go out there and do all these different things. And Jesus will say, Why did you do all that? It didn't make a difference. You didn't do it for me. You did it for yourself. I don't want to do anything for myself. I only want to accomplish the will of, of my Savior, Jesus Christ, and the will of the Father through the Holy Spirit that's in me. 
personally, I want to challenge you to find that place of solitude and then discipline yourself to have specific times every single day to push away a little bit. Go somewhere. Go outside. One of the ways that I have learned to meditate is by meditating on scripture, and I'm going to share that as we go. But one tool that you can use to help you kind of be disciplined in that is our app, Difference.app. On there, there are several different recorded meditations that are designed to teach you how to have the four S's of solitude, silence, scripture, and Sabbath. You can take advantage of that. Use that. People have gone through them more than once. You can start with a 10-day challenge just to get your body into a rhythm of finding a place of solitude to go find somewhere you can get away. You can use the the Bible itself. I'm going to teach you about Scripture and how to meditate on Scripture. How do we do that? What do we do? That's coming up in a few weeks. But the challenge is let's start here. Let's start in a place where we can start pushing away the world and stop focusing so much on time. You know, what's interesting is in today's world, it used to be that luxury brands in their advertisements would show people like playing tennis and sipping a drink in the afternoon, chilling by the pool. But today, advertisements are all about what you can do and doing more. Think about Nike's most famous campaign ever, just do it. They're constantly getting us to do something else. Apple has now come up with a watch that monitors all of your activity so you can maximize your time. And one of the things that the world wants you to do is to spend so much time on your physical body. And that's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But you're you're spending so much time under this pressure, under this law of, oh my gosh, I got to get my physical fitness in. But yet we're not doing the same for our spirit. We're we're just pushing and shoving more things into our day. We have no natural rhythm to our life anymore. There's a watch company called Tag Hewer, and uh, their tagline is now, don't crack under pressure. And it shows this woman with a line behind her and this guy, and it's all about what you can do and go make it happen and go conquer. But what does it say in John 15, 5? Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, the beautiful thing, the news that I have for you right now is that it's not about you doing more. It's actually about you allowing God to do more. And I'm telling you, I'm giving you permission to go find a place of rest, to go find a place of solitude, to have solitary time with God. That's the most important thing you can do this week. So if you need somebody to help hold you accountable or whatever, the best way to do that is, and I don't know where you're watching this, it's in your car, it's just by yourself, but it's to get into one of our home experiences. What people are doing is they're they're bringing all the tools that we have on the app into their home to create an experience with God, with their family, and then they're inviting others into that. The intimacy and the peace and the love and the joy that's coming from that is amazing. Me personally just had it this week with my group and we had a time of prayer that was powerful. We are seeing signs, miracles, and wonders happen as we follow Jesus. Jesus and petition the King of Kings. And it starts right here with us. It starts with getting into a place of solitude. So what about you? I challenge you, don't just watch this and walk away and go, well, I'm just going to go back to my normal life. Let's, let's, let's be true followers of Jesus. If this is speaking to you in this movement, join us in this. Stop putting it off. I will personally help you, and I've got other people that are going to help you create this home experience. All the tools are there. It doesn't require anything but for you to host it and then start to just guide people and lead people in this way of living. Next week, I'm going to talk about something called silence and why that's so important and what happens to us when we don't have silence. So don't miss it. Tune into that. And then continue to walk with us in this journey. Our next group gathering is going to be on Sunday, May 9th. That's Mother's Day. We're having a Mother's Day brunch. It's free for everybody. Bring your mom. If if your mom's not here, come and celebrate your mom anyways. We are going to have a a service out there, and we're going to have an amazing brunch. Guys are going to be serving people. It's going to be really, really cool. Don't miss it. And then remember, let Jesus be the difference in your life this week. Like, let go. Surrender it. Get rid of the anxiety. You don't need the medication anymore. Start doing this, and you'll start finding four things. Love, peace, joy, and hope. That's the life I'm living right now. There are challenges for sure, but I always go back to those four things. I want you to receive it as well so that he can be a difference and then you can go out and make a difference in the lives of others. God bless.